Welcome to my discussion on inventory. Today I'd like to talk with you about errors in inventory. My goal today, I want to understand the effect errors of ending inventory have on the financial statements. In the year the error occurs and in the subsequent year meaning if the original error occurs in the year 2014, the subsequent year would be 2015. We need to begin our discussion by reminding ourselves of something. That is to note the basic way we calculate cost of goods sold and ending inventory. I'm going to remind you of our basic cost of goods sold calculation. Remember that we start with beginning inventory and we add to it our purchases for the entire period. Those two together, those two together give us our total inventory available for sale for the period. And then we split that between ending inventory. Let's say in this case we have $20 left. The rest goes to cost of goods sold in our example 30. Now you can split it using periodic or perpetual. You can do FIFO life or a weighted average, but in some way you must split the total available between what's left and what's gone. What's left goes to the balance sheet as inventory a current asset and what's gone goes to the income statement as part of cost of goods sold. So let's notice a couple of things. An error in ending inventory causes an error in cost of goods sold. Because one is subtract from total available to calculate the other. But consider this. There is a second item of interest. The ending inventory for the current year becomes the beginning inventory for the subsequent year. So ending inventory for 2014 becomes beginning inventory for 2015. Ending inventory is subtracted out in our formula, but beginning inventory is added in. Because of this, the error in the subsequent year will be in the opposite direction in cost of goods sold. There's a good illustration of this in your book, so once you finish this pen cast, Go back to your book and look at that exhibit and think it through. Well, let's get started with looking at the effects of errors. Our balance sheet equation is always in balance. So, let's put some numbers in. We have $100 in assets. $10 in liabilities, you would have $90 in owner's equity. And so if we're in balance to start with and you have an error in assets because something's wrong with ending inventory, then you know you have another error. That equals another error somewhere else. And that other error is going to be an owner's equity, which I'm going to show you as we progress through our examples. So, let's get started by first looking at number one, an ending inventory error. And what do you say? Let's start with ending inventory being overstated. 
So the error is ending inventory is overstated by a simple number, five dollars. First, let's look at it from our balance sheet equation. Assets equals liabilities and owner's equity. We're currently sitting right here. But we know our assets are too big by five dollars. Ending inventory is overstated. That means owner's equity has to be overstated because we're in balance. If our assets are overstated by five dollars, they should really have been ninety-five. Our liabilities are fine, but our owner's equity is also overstated by five. It should have really been eighty-five. And then we would still in balance. Why is owner's equity overstated by five? Owner's equity is overstated by five because net income has been overstated by five. I'm going to prove that to you in a second. Net income is overstated by five because cost of goods sold was understated by five and went Ever is wrong in cost of goods sold, the opposite's wrong in net income because cost of goods sold really, remember, is just an expense. Expense is too small, net income too big. I'm going to bring forward our basic cost of goods sold calculation from our past page. I'm going to show you how we did it, realizing that was wrong, and then we're going to redo it correctly and see if what we say tapped the cost of goods sold. Hold on. We said beginning inventory was 50, purchase is 100, so total available is 150, ending inventory is 20. Cost of goods sold would therefore be the difference of 130. And remember, we're saying that that's wrong because ending inventory is overstated by 20. By five, it's not really 20, it should really be 15. We have overstated it in this calculation. But correctly, we would say total available is 150, ending inventory is 15, and cost of goods sold is 135. So cost of goods sold should have been 135. But we showed it at 130. It was too small. That would make net income too big. If net income is too big, we have overstated owner's equity by that amount. Owner's equity was too big at 90. It really should have been 85. So. An overstatement in ending inventory causes an overstatement in owner's equity. This is wrong, and this, this first line is incorrect, and this is correct. And the problem was caused by cost of goods sold in ending inventory. That shows you what it looks like when ending inventory is overstated. Let's do it again with ending inventory being understated. So in this example, we're going to say ending inventory is understated by $5. And let's start with that simple balance sheet equation. It says we're currently here. That's 10, huh? Plus 90. So let's grow up liabilities. And I'm saying ending inventory is understated by $5. If this is too small by 5, then this is too small by 5. And my asset should have really been 105. 
liabilities are correct and my owner's equity is understated, it really should have been 95. So I'm going to add it back. This is what's wrong. And this would be correct. Let's prove that by looking at our basic cost of goods formula calculation and I'll repeat it as it was wrong and then again I'll show it to you as it would have been had I done it correctly. Here's our starting point. Beginning inventory is 50. Purchase is 100. Total available is 150. We've costed out to balance sheet 20. Put in cost of goods sold 130. And that was wrong because ending inventory is understated by five dollars. It shouldn't be twenty. It should be twenty-five. Let's see what effect that has. This is what it looked like if we would have done it correctly. Total available is 150, minus ending inventory is 125, cost of goods sold should have been 125. We showed cost of goods sold at 130, but it should have been 125. So our expenses are too big. If our expenses are too big, cost of goods sold is too big. If cost of goods sold was too big, then net income was too small. And if net income was too small, it made owner's equity too small. So you can see it was wrong at 90, and it would have been right at 95. You can look at things from the summary view, or you can look at them from details. I kind of prefer summary. I'm going to work at it from a total summary perspective. I balance sheet equations in balance. What happens if I overstate ending inventory? Well, assets are too big, so owner's equity is too big because I overstated ending inventory. I was owner's equity too big because net income was too big. Why was net income too big? Because cost of goods sold was too small. I can reason my way through it without going through all of that proof. What about if I understated? Well, same thing applies. If assets are too little, then I know owner's equity is too little. Why would owner's equity be too little? Because net income was too little. Why was net income too little? Because cost of goods sold was too big. I understated my ending inventory. You can work it from summary, or you can put a little basic calculation together with small numbers and prove it to yourself. Either way, you get to the right answer. This is a little bit higher level and will make some of you uncomfortable. If so, plug in small numbers to the basic formula and see what happens. If this makes sense to you, then use the higher level. Now just something small to say about the subsequent year. And you can look at the illustration in the book. Consider this. Ending inventory is subtracted in the original year and it causes an error in cost of goods sold in the direction. Whatever that is depends on if it was over or understated. The next year that ending inventory becomes beginning inventory and it is added in in the next year. And so it will cause an error in the opposite direction. What that equals is net income being wrong for two years in opposite directions. I'm going to 
go out on a limb here and draw a picture of that and leave it with you to think about and look at the illustration in the book. If net income is too big one year and too little the next year, that nets to no error in owner's equity at the end of two years because the first year, in my case, it's too big. And then the second year, it reverses up. As long as ending inventory is okay, and there are no further errors in it, then owner's equity will be okay too. It will have netted out. Go ahead and read that illustration again and see if you can see that happening. Don't be too upset if you can't. A lot of first semester accounting students just get frustrated by errors in inventory. But we start looking at errors from now on, and pretty soon you'll get good at it. And that's it for now. Have a good day.